everyone, this is Glady Mar. I am the wet clay instructor here at the Firestone Art Studio and Cafe, and I'm here to bring you a fun little activity that you can do at home. So these are my sweet little gnome ornaments. So here they are. They have a little hook on them so you can easily hang them on your Christmas tree or anywhere if you'd like. They can easily stand up as well. Um, but I'm going to be showing you step by step how to make these little gnomes and how to paint them as well. Um, so I'm also going to be showing you what comes in our toolkit. So what's great about this toolkit is that we're going to give you all of the items so you'll be able to make all three of these or ornaments as well as the paint that you'll need to paint them as well. So here we have a one pound ball of stoneware if you've ever taken a uh, try it class with us. This is the type of clay that we use on the wheel, but you can also use it to hand build So that's what we're going to be doing today One pound believe it or not is enough to make all three of these ornaments. So very Handy you'll also get a little um, Bit of slip like this slip is just clay and a lot of water makes it nice and um, Sticky and that's we're going to use it as our glue to adhere our pieces together make sure they're nice and solid. You'll also receive three of these little hooks. Uh, these are metal wires that we've bent together into a U-shape and these will be put in at the end so that you can hang them. If you've ever taken a glass fusing class, you might have used these before to, um, on your glass pieces as well. You'll also have a toothpick, so they're great for making little textures. You see here on my little beard, I also added some texture to this gnome's hat. I added some little, uh, little snow there, super cute. So this is a very helpful tool. And you'll also receive some paints. So I have here all the paints that I used to make these gnomes. So I have the red, this little light blue, the gray, and then uh, the nose. So you'll also be able to decide whichever colors you'd like as well. You'll also receive paint brushes. Uh, I'm going to be using paint brushes for various reasons. Some of it is for um, grabbing some of the slip, putting it onto the gnome, as well as using this bottom part to kind of mold and shape the gnome. And then as well as painting it after we're done, right? So that's what you get in your toolkit. Um, anything else that you'll need at home will be some kind of linen or cotton just to put over your workspace just because clay is notorious for sticking to wood and really soft surf uh, clear surfaces. Um, so anything from an old towel to an old t-shirt will work. This is a drop cloth. Um, yeah, anything that's porous because this is also going to absorb some of the water that is in this clay at the moment. So that as well as a sponge, I'm just going to be using it to clean out my brush as I go and to also wipe the bottom of it. So any little sponge that you have around the house will do and then a little jar of water just because. So yeah, let's get started. So we have our clay here. As you can see my little gnomes, I made two kind of small ones and one big one. You don't have to do that, you can make them all the same size. But if you wanted to make the really big one, what I usually do is I'll tear this in half. I'm just twisting it like so. So I got a slightly larger one, slightly bigger one. And then this one, the larger one, I'm just going to twist again, do it in half. So there we have kind of two smaller pieces and a bigger piece like so. And I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not having any precise measurements if you wanted to make them the same size to make it easier for yourself, feel free. But I kind of like the way that they're a little happy family like that, right? So I'm gonna start with my big gnome. So I'm gonna set these two aside. And I'm going to take about half of this, like so. This bit. Roll it around my hand. This is gonna act as the body of it, so this bottom part. As you can see, I still have a bit of clay here. Actually, I'll take a little bit more. Make them a little bit bigger. And that's what's cool about these gnomes too, is like if you wanted to make the hat much larger, you could and leave the body smaller. Or if you wanted to have the body a little bit bigger and have a smaller hat, you could also do that, right? There's room for creativity and playing around. So I have my little 
ball here of clay. I'm just rolling around in my hand just to kind of smooth out any of these little lines I have here, like so. So here's my little round egg, it looks like, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and start making the bottom of it like this. You see it's hollowed out at the bottom. We do this for several reasons. One is so that it is able to dry very quickly because if it were all completely solid, it would take much longer for it to dry and a much longer turnaround for you to get it back once you bring it in and you fire it, right? So it makes it much, much faster um, for it to dry as well as it makes it a little bit lighter as well. So since these are gonna be hanging, we don't want them to be super heavy as well, even though they're quite small, clay can be quite heavy. So that's also why we're going to be hollowing it out. So I have my little round sphere here. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it on the table just to make it nice and flat on the bottom. You see the body's already kind of forming there. And then I'm gonna take the end of my brush. You can also take the end of a pencil or use your finger as well. And I'm gonna start digging into the clay and twisting it. This is just gonna make a little hole so that I don't have to do it with my finger. Like so. so I'd like to make it large enough so then I can easily fit my thumb into it. Right now it's a little bit too small. Again, we're just rotating it there like so. I can go ahead and start using my, my thumb. And what really I'm doing, I'm just rotating it around my thumb and kind of squeezing it just a bit, giving it little pinches, like so. If you've ever made a pinch pot, this is the beginning process of it. Like so. Like that, right? So that's pretty good. And it's okay, you see here my bottom part here is a little bit uneven now. You don't have to worry about getting it really, really um, even because all you have to do is really start dabbing it on the table again and it'll even out. Easy. So here's my the body right now. It's a little bit shorter than this one. So if I wanted to get it a little bit taller, I'm gonna roll it on the table like so. I'm gonna be very gentle. We don't wanna push too hard because because it's hollow, you might end up squishing it. Like so. So here's our little body. Super sweet, huh? All right. So now that I have the body, I'm gonna move on to making the beard. So the beard, you don't really need too much. I like to do about this much. And what I'm gonna do is again, roll it out into a ball and then start to flatten it in my palm. So I'm just squeezing my palms together, making it a little flatter. You can also use your thumbs to flatten it out like so. Like that, right? Some people also slam it on the table like this. So there's a few different ways. If you have a rolling pin, feel free to use it. It's just such a small little piece that I tend to just do it by hand. So here we have a little flat surface that I'm gonna go ahead and carve out my beard. So what's cool about these, I tried to vary them a bit, but you can make them really swirly, like this one, or a little bit boxier, like, like so. It's really up to you. But what I like to do first is cut out the top part. So I'm gonna draw a straight line over the top part here with my toothpick, like so. And a pro tip, it's helpful to use your toothpick at an angle like this instead of straight on like that because you might end up breaking that part. All right, so if you lay it flat like that, it's a much easier way to cut it like so. And then I'm just gonna start designing my beard here. So something like that. Like so, I'm gonna take away these parts and I'm left with a little beard. And I can test it up against it, maybe it's a little too big, well, maybe a little too big, so I might end up cutting a little bit more off the top here, like so. And you see it kind of has some kind of harsh edges right now, 
Um, you would feel inclined to use maybe some water to clean it up, but actually it's much easier to just round it off with your fingers like so. See how it's getting nice and smooth just by me running my finger along it? If you start adding water to it because it's already pretty soft, what's going to happen is it's going to get very sticky and very messy very quickly. So that's why I only really use slip to adhere the two large pieces um, and not these smaller pieces. I'm not using much water, like so. So I'm really just smoothing it out with my thumb, like that. that. Remember, these are back parts, so we don't have to worry too much about how that looks. Smoothing it out. And if I wanted to like bring it in, I could kind of give it some pinches there, like so. So let's test it. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, okay. So. What I like to do next, usually when you're making anything on um, the table or hand building, you would be adhering pieces, but since this clay is all about the same um, moisture level, we don't really have to do that at this point. So but what you wanna do to get these two pieces nice and stuck together is you wanna pinch. So I'll put one finger on the inside and one on the outside, and I'm gonna start pinching at the center of the beard and slowly moving my way out. That way I know I don't have any air bubbles or anything like that on the inside. Because I don't really want that between my clay. I'm just flattening it out there, like so. Again, using my finger to smooth it out. So now I can add some texture to my beard if I'd like. So here I've done little lines running along the beard. Here I'll show you. I'll take again the length of the toothpick and slowly work my way down like so, all the way to the bottom. You know what's great about working with clay like this is that if you do make a mistake, it's very easy to clean it up. So let's say I like accidentally scratched it like that. All I would need to do is just smooth it out with my finger again, get it all to the same level, and then go again. It's that easy. If you really mess up and there's like a really big hole in it, let's say like that, it's not even too big, like that, you can easily take a little bit of this extra clay that we've been put aside and kind of add it to your beard, right? So no harm, like so. Okay, like that. Continue adding my lines here. And you can add as many as you want, as little as you want. You don't need to add any at all if you don't want to. So here's my little, it has a body and a beard at the moment. <laughs> so next I'm gonna do the little nose. So, I'm gonna take a little bit of clay. You really don't need a lot for this. And again, roll it into a ball, like so. And what's interesting about this is it's actually a much larger piece of clay. So it sits here, but there's more clay on the inside because that's how we're gonna stick it to the body of the gnome. So I'm taking it, right now it's a little round circle, and I'm gonna start rolling it out. You can either do it in your palm like this or on the table like so, and you wanna have one side that's slightly larger than the other. So right now I have kind of a tapered end and a larger kind of rounded end. This is gonna be the nose, while well, this part you're not really gonna see, this, this part here, but it's gonna go right on top here and be covered by the hat. All right, so I'm just gonna shape it as I want, like so. What's cute about these gnomes is you can really add a lot of personality even though they really only have four parts to them. You can make their nose kind of like fun. You can add texture to their beard or to their little body. Go from there, right? Make them your own. So here we go, we have our little nose. So what I'm gonna do again is I'm gonna place it there. This looks about right, I kind of like that. Yeah, it's coming together. So now that I have it here, I'm gonna start pinching down 
like so. And again, I have my finger inside the bottom of it so that I'm able to really pinch down and get that clay stuck there, like so. And shape it like so. If you find that your clay is cracking, you see here there's like little itty bitty cracks. You can do, if it doesn't um, come off just by simply running your finger along it, you can also take a little bit of water, really a tiny, tiny bit. You see, I just dunked my brush and then cleaned off most of the water. And then I'm just gonna brush some of that water onto my piece. Cracking usually happens when there isn't as much moisture in the clay but just, it only really needs a little bit of extra moisture right there. I'm just cleaning up these edges. And here we have our little gnome. We had his body, his beard, and his nose. So now we're gonna move on to the hat. So the remainder of this clay I'm gonna use for the hat. So I'm gonna start again, always starting with a ball like this. And I'm going to start rolling it out. Again, the same thing with the nose where you want one end to be slightly larger than the other. The way I do that is by mostly rolling on one side like this, like that, so that you kind of get a tapered end, like so. Pretty good. You can also do to start getting this nice little swirl we have here. As you start from the bottom and slowly move your way to the top. I'm just running my thumb along it like that and it's bringing that clay to the top. Like that. Like so. but it's kind of wrapped too round at the bottom. So I'm gonna start tapping it on the table. Like so. And getting it a little bit flatter. Like that. So as you see here, it's nice and flat, but what you don't see here is that it kind of comes over the nose here and the rest of the body. And since our body is quite rounded at the top, we kind of want to round this part off too. All right, so the way I do that is I'll hold on to it with my left hand. I'm right-handed, so I'm going to use my right thumb to start kind of bringing out some of that clay from the center to the sides. So again, kind of like you would if you were to be making a pinch pot. Very, very. You can also pinch it as well like this. Like that. You can test it too. So like and hold it up against it. I feel like mine needs to kind of flare out a little bit more. So to flare it out, I'm just gonna start bringing it the edges further out, like that. Okay, let's test it out. Nice, I think that'll work. As you see here, the nose is kind of in the way at the moment. So what I like to do is give it a little bit of a push, that part of the hat, that way it fits nicely over the nose. So really all I'm gonna do is start pushing it up, like that. You see here, like so. Okay, test it again, nice. Okay, we got a big hat, right? So now, I'm gonna work on this tail part here. Make it nice and swirly. So I'm really bringing up some of that clay to the top. And what helps here is to keeping that swirl kind of tight like this. That way, if you um, end up firing it, bringing it home, this is gonna be nice and sturdy. Cause if you start bringing it out too far, and since it's so thin, it might be prone to cracking more than other pieces. So 
to maintain it and make sure that it doesn't break or crack, you wanna make sure that little spiral is kind of really close to itself like this one or this one. turning it as I pinch it, like so, all right, okay, I'm starting to bring it over to one side, like so, and bringing it in on itself, like that, About these edges here. Like so. There we go. Let's test it out. That's super cute. Yeah? Alright, so let's go ahead and do the last step, which is adhering this hat to the body, right? So this is where we're going to be using our slip. So first we're going to be scoring. So anytime you're going to be using slip, you want to score before. So scoring just means running your toothpick along the inside of the hat like this, anywhere you're, where you're adhering them. And you're going to be making little X's, little plus signs. What this does, it creates enough texture for that slip to slip into, right, um, to further adhere these two pieces together. So the same thing, I do it over here. Just run it along. It doesn't have to be perfect. By any means, like so. All right, so the two pieces that are being adhered have had slip on them. So now I'm gonna move on to using my slip. And that's when I'll grab my brush and take a little bit put it right onto the part where I just scored, like that. Like so, like so. The reason we slip and score this part and not any of the other parts is because they're two very large pieces. And because of that, we wanna make sure they're nice and sturdy so they don't end up coming apart in the drying process. So, now that I have it here, I'm gonna go ahead and smush it together and I start to press down, first on the nose and then on all the sides. So I see here, I'm really pressing down there. And that slip is coming through and that's okay because we're gonna be able to clean that up later. Like that. You see my hat is kind of big on this end so I'm gonna start pinching it so that it reaches the body. it and laying it down. Like so. Nice. Here's my little gnome. And I have some slip around there so I can easily clean that up. That same brush that we had slip on, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, grab a little bit of water on it, and then go around those edges. And you really don't need a lot of water. You'll notice if you end up adding too much water, it gets really sticky and hard to work with. So a little bit of water goes a long way. sure you have a nice feel between those two pieces so you see there isn't any gaps that way you know they're not going to come apart 
we go. Awesome. So I'm happy with my little gnome here, which I am. I can go ahead and add this metal piece to it. So we have it here. I'm going to go ahead and put it at the top of the gnome's hat, so about right there. And all you got to do is dig in and then press down like so. Like that. You just want to be mindful since it is drying, you don't want to pick it up from here while it's drying because it might end up coming off. So still pick it up from the body like that. And so what I'm going to do next is down here, I'm just going to write my name on it. That way I know it's mine, right? Because we might have a lot of these gnomes. So it's going to be helpful to have your name on the bottom. If you can't, if you don't have enough space on there, you can go ahead and write just your initials as well but having something to identify it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead with my needle tool and write my name. There you go. All right, so there's my first gnome. Now I'm gonna move on to painting this one so you know how to paint it as well. Go. But before I do that, I can show you some of the detail stuff here. So if you want to do little snowflakes, you could also do that. These little dots I made were just with the full tool here. So I was able to, to just dot it there. You can do that on the body, you can do that on the nose, really anywhere. I also on this one, I had a little extra clay, so I added some feet. So if you wanted to add some feet, you can. Here we have our big gnome here. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush off of any of that slip, move it aside, and start painting. So here I have the same paints that I used for this gnome. So it has a red body, a light blue hat, the gray beard, and then a cream nose. So I'm gonna start with the smaller parts of it. So first the nose and then the beard. I'm going to grab my small brush, my vanilla dip here, which is our cream nose. And if you've ever painted with us, you know that these glazes, we need to do three nice heavy coats so that you can see them. So like so, so my little nose there, and I'm just going to start painting it. Mm -hmm. And unlike bisque pieces that are the ones that you come in to paint here, or at the clay pen, or you've taken home as a to-go kit, you'll notice that the first layer of glaze really just gets soaked up by that bisque, right? But with this, since there's a lot of water still in this piece, it's not really getting soaked up much. So the painting process might take a little bit longer, um, but that's okay, because it's quite a small piece, right? And if you do all three of your pieces, you can start with the nose on one, move on to the next one, and go from there. So right now my first coat is kind of dry so I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more from my second coat like so. Sweet. Okay so I'm gonna let the nose dry a bit and I'm gonna move on to the beard. Always remember how many coats you've done on them so you can come back to them later. So this is our gray, it's a light gray like this. And I'm just gonna start painting the beard. Mm -hmm. That's also why I like adding texture to it because that glaze will kind of pull in those um, textured parts of it as well and it gives it a little bit more dimension so remember you want to have a pretty generous coat like so there's my first coat go ahead and add a little bit more Mm. Mm. There you go. 
out. So we have two coats on each of those. I might go ahead and wait a little bit and then move on back to the nose to make finish that third coat. So yeah, in the meantime, I might add some texture to my hat. You see here, any part you messed up, since the clay is still pretty wet, you can easily just clean it off. I'm using my, my nail, but if you wanted to use the end of your paintbrush, you can also do that. Clean it right up. Yeah, like that, right? So here, I'm finish. And I am cleaning my brush in between these two colors. That's why you can kind of switch back and forth between them, like that. yeah, I might add some fun texture to it. So here I had some little snowflakes. So the way I did that is by using that technique where I'm laying down the tool over the clay like that, and you're gonna get a nice little imprint. So I think these are little six-sided, yeah, they're six-sided snowflakes. So I'm just gonna make three lines, kind of making like so. And then I'm going to start making the little details on each of them. So again, just laying the tip of the toothpick over each side, like that. You can get creative with this. You can write your name on it, right? If it's a gift, you can write the recipient's name on it, stuff like that. So there's my little snowflake. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna move on to my beard again. Great. There's nice three coats. So now I can move on to the body. So I'm holding on to the top end. I'm gonna take my larger brush so I can get more surface area covered. Open up red color. Grab a good amount on my brush and start painting. Remember you want to be mindful of not getting it on the bottom part here. And I'll show you how to clean it up afterwards. But since this is going into the kiln and it is a high fire glaze or clay, um, we aren't going to be painting the bottom of it. If you wanted to wait for these pieces to be a little bit drier, you also could, or if you didn't want to do the painting the same day as making the gnome, you don't have to. You can leave them out to dry and then paint them afterwards as well. But yeah, once you're done with your piece, you can wrap them up, bring them over to the fire stone and we'll fire them for you. So they'll be nice and shiny like this. There we go. There's one coat of the red. I'm gonna go ahead and start the second coat. And you see I'm being pretty generous with my coats. You wanna make sure it has a nice solid color. So in this bottom part, I don't have too much on there, but if I did, I would take it off with my sponge. You can also use a rag as well, a napkin. I'm just gonna run my sponge along it and take off some of the back glaze. Like that. And it gives us a nice clean edge too, you know? Kinda like deep. Nice, right? go we have our two coats still a little bit wet so we might wait a bit and move on to the hat we have our light blue here Mm 
the top here. You want to make sure you don't get too much on the wire there. So once you're done painting, you can go ahead and wipe it as well. earlier this is when I would hop on to painting my other two pieces but since I only did one for this tutorial I might have to wait a little bit to do the third coat of the body and the hat but this is our little gnome you can also do two in this instance where it's already drying and so you already had three coats is you can actually take off some of that clay using uh, your toothpick here like that and make texture on it like so as well like that just super cool if I wanted to do little snowflakes little dots I also could so that would leave a white once it's dry it'll look white like this and that's also an idea that you can do so yeah I let this dry once it's fully dried you can go ahead and wrap it back in the box, bring it over to us at the Firestone, and we'd be happy to fire it for you. And since this piece has already been gla glazed and made, you'd actually only have to fire it once. So, a quicker turnaround than our usual wet clay stuff, which is really great. So, that is all. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I can't wait to see what you make of any of these gnomes. All right. Happy holidays.